people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a damn good day. Today we will be talking about Marco Silva's Fulham, his set of tactics, how you can replicate and recreate it in FIFA 23. Of course, in the Premier League, Fulham have done incredibly well last season and they will continue to do well this season, even without the likes of Mitrovic. It will be harder though, with, uh, without an out and out goal scorer. Of course, Jimenez, he's uh, not the, the, the best, especially after that crazy injury he had a few seasons ago. So yeah, it will be very interesting to see how Fulham, you know, they, they, they navigate the Premier League this season. I think they will struggle a little bit, but I don't think that struggle will mean relegation, to be fair to them. Uh, so yes, just going through the team, we've got Raul Jimenez up front, we've got Pereira, we've got Wilson, we have got Willian on the, the left wing, although I think he could eventually drop out for the likes of Alexi Wobi or potentially Traore, but I think, just like at Wolves, Traore will probably be the, the, the bench, the, 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 the impact player off the bench, I should say. Um, we've got Paulinho, the, the failed move to Bayern, keeps him here at Fulham. We've got uh, Reed, Castagna, Diop, Ream, and then Robinson. And then, of course, between the sticks, we've got Leno. On the bench, in the substitutes department, we've got Traore, Iwobi, Carney, uh, Lukatic, or Lukic, uh, Rodak, Tete, and then Basie. And then in the reserves, we've got Vinicius, Kazawa, who I think is actually left. I should probably transfer him back to, I think, PSG. Um, but we've got Bellatoro. Um, Deco Dover Reed, of course, Munez, and then a few others I do not care to mention too much. Um, so, yes, as you can see right here, we've gone with a 4 2 3 1 wide, one goalkeeper, two centre backs, two full backs, two DMs, one cam, two wide midfielders, and then, of course, one striker up front. So, with the, the tactics, of course, Marcus Silva tries to implement a, a press after loss of possession. Now, this is uh, a lot better now that Mitrovic is out the team. I could say that's one good positive factor for him not being in the team. Of course, last season he was the the, the, the out and out striker. He didn't have to do too much work off the ball because I mean you were trying to preserve his energy and his stamina um, and and make sure that he was more sharpened when it came to the attacking outlet. Whereas now you've got Raul Jimenez who's a lot faster. He's quite happy to to do a bit more of the the dogged defensive work. So they do try and implement a press after loss of possession. Try and be a bit more reactive to what the opposition can do with the ball. Of course, you won't always have the ball um, in in most moments of the game. They try and take a very pragmatic approach and then will try and hit you on the counter attack. So that's more or less what they're trying to do. And they will more more times than not try and win that ball hype the field and then counter attack from there. As for the width, it's set to sixty. Now this. It's more of a zonal type marking system. I mean, with the, the center backs, the full backs, and sometimes even the, the wingers who act as auxiliary full backs at times, they will take up a certain zone and try and make sure that that zone is cleared at all times, especially when the ball is in the the, the danger area, you could say, the, the final third for the opposition when they're trying to whip those balls into the box. And basically what this does is it, it sets up a very nice man-to-man -man type system at times where you will try and take on your man in that specific zone that your, your player is in. So as for the depth, it is set to 75. It's a high block, you could say, but it, what it does is it, it allows your sense backs to get nice and high up the field and it allows them to be a bit more aggressive with what they try and do to the opposition's front line. You're trying to obviously compress them in their own half. Of course, in some moments you can drop that dramatically down you can make it uh, a, mid, a bit of a mid block having Palinia and Reed or Palinia and whoever your, your secondary pivot is. Um, you can have them sitting flat bang in front of your back four or your back two in certain moments and you can have them just protecting it. But what this tries to implement is that, that nice high pressure from your, your uh, two centre backs and sometimes your full backs as well, getting them nice and high up the field, trying to squeeze your opposition into their own half. So as for the build up play, it is set to fast build up. You do try and win the ball back and then uh, transition it very quickly. You do have the likes of Traore in the team now that are very, very capable of doing so. But more importantly, you do have a faster strike. You don't just have Mitrovic who's going to, you're going to want to try and lump the ball in to the top and wait for him to get up the field as well. You have uh, a Jimenez, you can even rotate him out the team for potentially a Carlos Vinicius, or maybe even if you want to go incredibly quick, you can play Traore up front as well. I know at Wolves he did play at strike in certain moments, but mainly it was on the, the right hand side. But those crosses will be fired in at a, at a rapid rate, whether it's from your fullbacks or whether it's from your, your wingers. Both will have a, a good amount of, of um, high volume crosses being whipped in from either flank into that striking area for your, your offensive line to try and latch onto. As for chance creation, it's set to forward runs. Now we've done this because you are trying to stretch the back line on a vertical scale, but like I said earlier, you don't have Mitrovic in your team anymore, so you don't need to have a, a slower build-up with him and the team trying to incorporate him a bit more and wait for him to get into the box before you have an attacking threat there. So with this, you have a faster-paced um, front line, so you will look to try and stretch that. 
opposition's defense um, more times than not. And as for the width, it's set to 70, like I did say, so you're trying to stretch that midfielder out a bit. You're trying to get your, your fullbacks and your wingers into those wider areas, those danger areas, because Fulham do tend to whip a lot of balls into the box. Um, they are, I think they are one of the highest crossing teams in the, the Premier League, especially last season. I mean, that makes sense. They've got Mitrovic. We will have to see a bit more how this season um, continues with how many crosses they will find into the box. But I think even with Jimenez being in the team or potentially Carlos Vinicius being in the team, I still think they will maintain a high volume amount of crosses. As for players in the box, it is set to eight. So more times than not, it will be your front three if your fullbacks are whipping it in. And it will be an additional midfielder or potentially your your opposite sides wing back or fullback getting into the box as well and then as for corners and free kicks it is set to four so as for burnt leno he is said to be able to come for crosses for his um saving on, on crosses so he will look to claim those aerial balls whipped into the box for him but i've set him to have a balanced approach when it comes to saving outside the box because i don't necessarily think he has that ability and those capabilities to be the the best sweeper keeper and of course we are trying to replicate a realistic approach so yes he will occasionally make a run outside the box if there's a long ball whipped in and it's too far for the the attacking player and too close to him he will make that run win it back and then circulates back into possession but more times than not he's not going to look to try and be the the, the very best sweeper keeper so like i said we are looking to replicate and recreate a, a realistic approach and i think for fulham and and uh Bert leno i think that more or less gets the best out of him um in that manner so as for reem and diop they are said to have the same set of instructions both are said to step up now this is because i i did note that more times than not they will be very aggressive when engaging with their opponents high up the field with that um high block that they do tend to play so that's why i've gone with the step up they will look to try and, and impose their physicality on the opposition's front line deep in their own half at times as well um and then as for castagna it could be tete it could be castagna i've gone with castagna because he has a better rating um, and I'm very excited to see what he can do for this Fulham team, especially with the crossing abilities that he does possess. Um, but he's said to join the attack and overlap, by the way, and of course stick to position and normal interceptions. And then as for Robinson, he is said to the same set of instructions, join the attack, overlap, and stick to position as well. Like I say, your fullbacks, they will be very important in whipping those balls into the box, supplying your forwards, supplying potentially Pereira, who will make uh, occasional runs into the box as well. Um, and they're going to be very important for the system to work out very, very well. I must say, under Marco Silva, Robinson last season was absolutely fantastic. Um, as for Paulinho, a failed move to Bayern Munich. Apparently, he's moved with, a, well, he's been linked with Bayern Munich again in January. I think it might actually happen then, to be fair. Um, Manchester United, no, we're a bro club, of course. Um, but anyway, Paulinho, he's here to um, cut passing lanes, have a balanced approach, so he will look to more or less play that box to box role. You don't. You don't necessarily want him too close to your goal. Of course, he can play out from the back, but you don't always want him that, that like in that little half space. That's what you have Reed for. You want him to be in that that little mid space between the likes of Pereira and Reed. Um, as for interceptions, it's set to normal. Of course, you can have it on aggressive, but I've gone with normal because you want him to have a bit more structure um, to his to his game. Of course. I'm saying of course too much, I know. Somebody commented in one of the videos, you say of course a lot, I'm like, oh no, I'm, try I'm trying, I'm trying. But it, it, it just, it, it happens, it, it, it happens. Anyway, he said to stick to position and then cover the wing. So when Robinson does look to bomb on forward, he will look to fill in that area for him. And then finally, as for Reed in the, the, the double pivot, of course, he is said to cut past and stay back while attacking, normal interceptions, cover the center, and then stick to position. So he will look to drop into that little half space between the likes of Reem and Diop, collect the ball from Leno, and then progress it higher up the field. What they normally try and set up with, which is what the system does tend to do in certain moments, it, it sets up in a 4-1-4-1, uh, with Reem being the, the deepest uh, midfielder, creating that one, essentially. But basically, for, for the attacking outlet, and sometimes the defensive outlets, they do set up with the 4-2-3-1 the wide formation. So you will see in, in moments of your, of your game plan stuff, the 4-1-4-1 the four, one, four, one shape in, in certain moments, like I said. So as for Pereira, he is to come back on defense, have a balanced approach for those crossing runs, and then have the, the free roam ability on, and then normal interceptions. So he will look to drop down, drop deep into the midfield, collect the ball if the likes of Paulinho and uh, Reed are overrun. So he will look to try and link the attack in certain moments, but also he will look to try and you know help the the, the, the defensive pressure or try and help alleviate the, the defensive pressure by adding another body into that midfield area. Um, 
of course, normal balanced um, crossing runs. So you want them sometimes in and around that, that area, sometimes making the deeper runs, sometimes hanging around the, the edge of the box, um, circulating play and just making sure you can potentially find those probing passes. And then free roam, it does create little overloads in certain areas. So if your wingers do tend to cut inside, he will look to operate with them in and around those little half spaces, um, like I say, creating overloads. As for William, he said to come back on defense, stay wide, um, have a balanced support when it comes to his supporting runs, and then of course get into the box. So he will look to act as an auxiliary fullback at times, helping out, creating a back six with Wilson doing the same thing on the other side. But sometimes he will look to, or most times he'll look to stay wide. So there is going to be a slight clash between Robinson and, and William in that wider area because both of them will look to make those touchline um, runs. But it does tend to work out with either William cutting inside a little bit more, even though he is still set to stay wide and Robinson making the overlapping run, but more times than not, William will look to operate wide on the touchline, um, creating 1v1 situations and potentially taking on his man and beating him. But more times than not, he will he will try and whip the ball in, cross the ball quite nicely. He will, he will very rarely look to cut inside, and if he does, that's what you need to do. You need to drive him in 1v1 with the defender, take them on, cut inside, and potentially fire off shots. And then supporting runs, you can have him on get, get in behind and try to stretch that back line. But sometimes, like I say, you do want them to cut, uh, come short a bit, um, link up with the, the midfield in certain moments, and he does tend to, get, to do that quite well. And then, of course, get into the box. Makes sense. Make those angled runs. Supply another body into the box for the attacking outlets. Um, and then we have here Wilson. He is here to come back on defense, have a balance with, and as well as have a balance support with his run. So he will not always look to hug the touchline, stay wide. He will sometimes come inside a bit more, cut inside, get shots off with his left foot. Of course, both wingers are left and right footed, so they're, they're inside forwards at times. And then supporting runs, you can have him on getting behind or come short or have the free roam ability, but it's best to just leave it as that because it does add a nice dynamic approach to the gameplay and then get into the box for those back post runs and then finally we have got Jimenez the man who's replacing the likes of um how many goals did he score last season Mitrovic like 13 and then he got suspended and it was crazy but he's he's got a big job on his hands and to be honest I do think he can fulfill that but like the last few seasons at Wolves after the crazy head injury he did have um, it was very hard to watch because you could see there was like a, a little thing of te like tension in his head where he was he was hesitant, he was hesitant, and it, it makes sense, I mean, you've had your skull crushed, so, but anyway, I'm, I'm digressing. He is said to have a balanced width, um, mixed attack, aggressive interceptions, and then come back on defense, so he will look to help the defense, he will look to also try and lead the, the, the press after you lose possession from the front press in the back line, that's why I've gone with aggressive interceptions sent to be on, but uh, what changes from Mitrovic to Jimenez is, the balance width and the, the mixed attack. So with Mitrovic, it was a target man and stay central. He just wanted him in the box and, and also stay forward. He, he wasn't prepared to help the defense on the defensive end. He wasn't prepared to make the runs to the channels. Whereas Jimenez, he's got a lot more stamina, a lot more speed about him, and he can't afford to do these things for Fulham. And I think in the long run, it will actually prove to be a better um, transition than just having a, a big striker up front who's not prepared to help out the team. So yes, he will look to try and make those wider runs in certain moments, and he will look to try and stretch the back line on a vertical scale by getting in behind, but he can also do the target man job of backing into the defenders, getting them out of the game, spraying off, laying off passes, and getting involved in making those runs into the box. So I think it works out very, very well, replacing the likes of Mitrovic with Jimenez, especially in FIFA 23, I think it works out very nicely. Maybe not so much in real life because Jimenez is outlets in real life um, has dwindled ever so slightly quite a lot actually in the the past few months weeks and years anyways that is my set of tactics for Marco Silva's Fulham if you have enjoyed it please hit the like button down below subscribe if you are new we are very close to 1800 subscribers so if you can hit that big red button hit that big thumbs up button or the thumbs down button if you did not enjoy my content that's fine that's okay we all have our own opinions but most importantly I hope you guys have a damn great day I'm out